The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Today we're going to talk about conditional statements. You're going to find these statements on your logic games sections. You're going to find them as part of your clues. So learning how to analyze them, how to interpret them, and how to symbolize them is going to come in handy when you tackle your logic games. So we're going to go over some of the ground rules for conditional statements. Generally, they're, they're going to be if-then statements. It's if something happens, then something happens. So it's not always going to have an if-then explicitly, but it's always going to follow the general rules spelled out here. And we're going to have some, we're going to have more videos on the more obscure conditional statements that might not have an if-then, uh, might not have the if-then words, but will still have that same relationship. So in an if-then statement, you're always going to have a dependent statement and an independent statement. You're going to always have a statement that can happen. Um, only if another thing happens, which is the dependent statement, and you're going to have an independent statement, which you don't know, it, it's independent of, of the previous statement. So um, you'll see how this plays out when we do the examples. In the if-then, the if is always the dependent statement, and the then is always the independent. So the dependent, the if, is always going to be symbolized on the left side of the conditional arrow, and the independent is always going to symbolize is always going to be symbolized on the right side of the conditional arrow. Every statement has a contrapositive and basically this is just a way of extracting more information from the statement. What you do is you flip uh, both sides of the statement and you negate them. So for instance, if this is our statement if r then t, the contrapositive would be if not t then not r. And to give you an example how this is applicable to an actual t uh, game, if you have, say, a rule that says if R is in team 4, then T is in team 4, you can also get the contrapositive and figure out that if T is not in team 4, then R is not in team 4. So if you have a rule that says, a subsequent rule after, after this one that says T is not in team 4, for instance, you can just automatically infer that R is not going to be in team 4. So a contrapositive is a good way of getting more information out of uh, one of the statements. So we're going to go over some of the examples, some of the practice problems. You have a PDF under this video. You can download it or print it and go along um, while we do it, or you can try and do it yourself and then check your answers. The first problem reads, if Gerald finishes third, then Jasmine finishes first. So this is a traditional if-then statement. It's very, it's, uh, very straightforward. The if is always going to be on the left hand of the on the left hand side of the arrow, and in this case, that's if Gerald finishes third. So we're going to symbolize that by a G and a three. Remember, you always want to symbolize the symbol as, as simple as possible. You don't want to have a really long sentence type um, symbol. You want something really neat, really small, so you can go back to it and just um, and and interpret it really quickly, so you don't have to be thinking about it. So that's going to be the if statement, and then Jasmine finishes first is the then statement. Now, in this one you know, for instance, that it's, it's an if then, so you know which was dependent, you know which was independent. Another way to actually try and analyze the relationship, you can, you can, you can actually see how <clears throat> this one, uh, Gerald finishing third, is dependent on Jasmine finishing first, because if Gerald if uh, Jasmine does not finish first, then Gerald cannot finish third. Because if Gerald finishes third, then Jasmine finishes first. So you know that if you have a situation where Jasmine's second or third or fourth, then you know that Gerald could not have finished third. Because if he ever does finish third, then Jasmine finishes first. And on the flip side of that, you might say to yourself, well, isn't Jasmine finishing first dependent on Gerald finishing third? No, that's not true. Jasmine can finish first, and Gerald doesn't necessarily have to finish third. So Jasmine can finish first, 
and Gerald could finish fifth, Gerald could finish third, um, second, Gerald could finish fourth. But if for Gerald to finish third, Jasmine has to have finished first. So that's might be a little confusing and um, it might be a little hard to kind of it's it's just a lot of similar sounding words and all that. But if you if you start to think about it and you start to do more of these, you'll start to get that relationship. So we'll go on to the next one. If Carl does not go on Tuesday, then he goes on Friday. So the F is on the left side. So if, if Carl does not go on Tuesday, and now this tilde is the negation sign. So that's a not sign pretty much. So if he does not go on Tuesday, then he goes on Friday. And again, to get the relationship down, um, you know that for Carl, Carl can go on Friday in any, <clears throat> Carl can go on Friday even if Carl doesn't go on Wednesday, for instance, or if he doesn't go on Thursday. But if he doesn't go on Tuesday, then he will go on Friday for sure. So it's, it's another one of those um, that you have to... You have to just try and analyze the relationship so that you can understand the, the symboli symbolization a little better. Um, we actually skipped the contrapositive uh, for number one, so we're going to go back to number one real quick. Remember, for the contrapositive, all you really have to do is flip and negate. So you flip the J1 and the G3, and you negate them. So it's going to be, if Jasmine does not go first, then Gerald does not go third. And for number two, if Carl does not go on Friday, then Carl goes on Tuesday. For number three, we have if Mary leaves second, then Kathy does not leave third. So again, it's another straightforward if then. If Mary leaves second, then Kathy does not leave third. <clears throat> and the contrapositive of that is obviously going to be if Kathy leaves third. Then Mary does not leave second. Number four reads, if Brian is not scheduled for Wednesday, then Daisy is not scheduled for Monday. So, Brian's not scheduled for Wednesday, Daisy's not scheduled for Monday. Contrapositive, you flip and negate. So, if Daisy is scheduled for Monday, then Brian is scheduled for Wednesday. Number five reads, Eric finishes sixth if Walter finishes third. So in this one, they flipped it around. It's, it's not a straightforward if then. They still have an if though, so that gives away kind of which statement is the dependent one. So you know that it's, you can, you can change it to pretty much if Walter finishes third, then Eric finishes sixth. So, if Walter finishes third, then Eric finishes sixth. And the contrapositive of that is going to be flipping the gate. Eric does not finish th sixth, then Walter does not finish third. And number six, Haley is not second in line if Joe is fourth in line. So again, you have uh, you have the kind of the flip version. You can turn it around in your head to to make it read. If Joe is fourth in line, then Haley is not second in line. So that would be if Joe is fourth in line. Second in line, the contrapositive of that. Haley is second in line. Joe is not fourth in line. 
<clears throat> so these are, I mean, these are pretty easy. Um, the way they're written down make it kind of easy for you to figure out which is the if and the then. Again, this, um, knowing the rules makes it really easy to figure out which is a dependent and an independent. Uh, I would also practice, especially while you're practicing, to try and figure out the actual relationship going on between the statements because that helps you figure out and understand uh, the relationship better. So, again, like we were saying with this one, knowing why it is that Gerald is the in is a dependent and Jasmine is the independent helps you figuring out why that relationship works the way it does. And you should do the same for all the, the rest of them to not only help you understand this better, but it helps your logical reasoning skills improve. So, <clears throat> if you have any questions, you can email us at lsat180uf at gmail.com. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos, and we should be having, we should make, we should be making other videos on more conditional statements if you need more practice on this, as well as logic games themselves. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.